camp right here in front of the tracks. Oh, here we are. <laughs> we have left. Ah, the dust has already risen. It's crazy. Wow. <laughs> Totally random. A gentleman brought us two goats. They too have spent a night, no laughing matter. My name is Giuseppe, and I have a mission. To travel the world, to meet the most extraordinary people on the planet, and to ask them a simple question. What does happiness mean to you? Welcome to Project Happiness. In Africa, more precisely in Mauritania, there exists a steel monster that slithers for over 700 kilometers, crossing the desert. This iron beast, nearly three kilometers long, is the longest means of transportation in the world. A giant of metal and gears that relentlessly plows through the vast Sahara Desert is the Iron Train. Every day, its 200 wagons carry about a million tons of iron from the mines of Zuera to the port of Nouadhibou, where they are emptied into tanker ships that mainly reach the coasts of France and China. With no other railway lines in Mauritania, this is the country's only train, and many people climb aboard its iron-filled wagons to reach some villages in the heart of the desert. Theoretically, this will be prohibited, but the police turn a blind eye as there is no other way to cross it. The objective of this mission is to clandestinely jump onto the train's wagons and undertake with these people a grueling 20-hour journey where every kilometer tells a story of courage and fate. There's a tiny detail though. The train arrives, but above all, departs whenever it wants. Well, we've just arrived in Zuirat, which is the city from where the train, the train we were supposed to take today, uh, departs. But we missed it, and so fortunately a gentleman opened the doors of his house to us and welcomed us into this small room. We have set up a camp here, so tonight that will be our bed, we will sleep there. And tomorrow, well, we'll be ready for the longest journey ever taken on the train, 24 hours, clandestine, on the iron train. We'll try to get on and climb along with um, all the Mauritanians who actually often make this very tough, very dangerous route. And we'll try to understand what their life, their dreams, their desires are and what happiness means to them. The following morning at the Zuera market, we meet a young Bedouin who, intrigued by our cameras, starts talking to us. We discover that he also intends to jump onto the train this afternoon, but he advises us to buy the same type of headgear he has, to protect ourselves from the iron dust. Bo and uh, I have camped right here in front of the tracks and we've been waiting for the train for about two hours now. But now I'll hand over to my new travel companion, Bo. Bo. You are welcome, guys. <laughs> Currently, we are at the sta uh, train station located between uh, Fterk and Zwerat. I hope that the wait no, is worth the, uh, the adventure because we've been here for about three hours now. And uh, I, I'm, I'm melting even in the shade. I'm moving away from the station because it actually seems that uh, the train doesn't stop at the station, but stops further down the line. The most important thing to bring on the train are fists, bottles of water, because it will be 24 hours on a train where we will have access to nothing, no bathrooms, no bars, where we can get something. As soon as you see the train, you will understand what I'm talking about.
Three more passengers are arriving. They can be seen on the horizon, carrying huge sacks, which they will surely load onto the train and climb aboard with us clandestinely. We need to move, because it seems that the train doesn't stop here, but further down. It's kind of funny because the train is three kilometers long, so not stopping here uh, means it stops three kilometers away, which is no small detail. It seems that it's arriving. It has arrived. But this is only the head of the train, and the end is not in sight. We were told that this is the first part, already heavily loaded with iron freshly taken from the mine, and then another part will arrive, which will connect with this one, and the train will become the longest in the world. We made a mistake again. We need to go further ahead. So you go up, and I'll pass you all the things. I have to be very quick because it's starting to leave. <laughs> I passed all the water. Yeah. We did it! Come on, Nino, you climb up too because we are taking it like this. Wow. Here we are. We're all aboard. So we made it. The train is about to leave. Bo has already uh, found a great spot. He's made himself a little room there. We are really on a few pile of iron. The only thing I didn't expect is that it would be completely wet. I mean, it's very wet. The last of the clandestine passengers are getting on. But near us, there's no one. I don't see anyone. The train is so long that maybe they could be 10 wagons away from us. And we can't see them. But for now, we are alone. Me, Bo, and Nick. Look at that man with the red jacket. He is practically digging his bed for tonight. See how he's lowering the little iron mound a bit, because otherwise it's not comfortable. And he's preparing the bed. Can you put me this? <laughs> I, want to, I want to wear it like you. Okay. I feel like a mummy. It seems all twisted now. I imagine he can't make a mistake because if he does it every day, but... Now we're ready because... As soon as the train starts, all the iron dust will come on to us. We have at least two and a half kilometers of wagons in front of us full of iron. So a very black dust will rise. Getting in our eyes. And at least this will cover our nose and mouth for breathing. Oh. <laughs> We've started! <laughs> let's go! Someone let go! Okay. Okay, we're leaving, guys, we're leaving. After a very long six hours of waiting, as long as this train, we are starting, we're moving very slowly. The train will reach a maximum of um, 50 kilometers per hour. It's not very fast, but the journey will be long, constant. It, it will be difficult. It will be hard because even the temperature will change. Right now we're in short sleeves, but when night falls, Bo says we will be freezing. But for now, we've covered ourselves with this. What's, what's the name of this? Hauli. With the Hauli, which is a traditional Mauritanian veil. All Mauritanian men wear it, and here it is essential because it covers you and protects you from the iron dust that rises once the train picks up speed, to avoid breathing in too much of it. Surely we will take some of it home with us. But the adventure begins. Before we set off on the train, let me tell you about something new. 90% of us are used to using the browser that's already installed on our PC, right? But what if I told you that, for a few months now, I've been using a completely free browser that's faster, smarter and more secure than any other you're using at this moment. I'm talking about Opera, which has reinvented the word browser, offering you distraction-free navigation and keeping everything under control with intuitive organization. You can intuitively organize your tabs with tab islands, separate groups of connected tabs. It's a stress-free experience. 
drag, drop, manage everything at your command. And then there's Aria, the integrated artificial intelligence that becomes the best virtual assistant. Aria answers your questions, generates content in real time, and translates and summarizes text on any web page. In short, it makes your browsing experience unique. Finally, you should try Lucid Mode, which enhances the quality of the videos you watch online by setting your preferred level of sharpness. See the before and after with just one click. Ditch the default settings, try Opera, and transform the way you browse online. I'll leave the link in the description for you to download Opera today and discover all the differences. It's a pleasure to share the journey with you. <laughs> yeah, me. Me, it's a honor. Nino! Ragazzi. Here we are. This is the train team. So, we always have to stay down, all three of us, because the train can jerk suddenly, which can throw you off. In fact, it's very dangerous. It's not only the longest and heaviest train in the world, but it's also the most dangerous. So, we always have to be very careful, because there can be sudden braking, a sudden acceleration, and you can easily be thrown off. Show them how the situation is. Here we go. Here we are. This is what we're risking. Damn it. Ugh. So... Crazy dust has already risen. Fortunately, we brought snow masks. They should help. Exactly. At least the eyes are fine, but everything gets in through the mouth. Wow. It's like being on Mars. I can't see anything. For now, it's perfect, ideal climate for it. Cool. The only thing is that you can't see anything, especially with the glasses. Nothing with the ski mask. Our friend Bo even prayed here on the train. He was about to fall. Because clearly any Muslim when praying must stand up. Watch out. And this happens that the train gives these jolts and then you can fall here. Indeed, he said, okay, Allah will forgive me. I'll pray sitting down. But he did it here with us too. Now it's starting to get a bit cold. Oh no, it's starting to get cold. Exactly, exactly. The right moment, just right. He couldn't have said anything truer. Live in the moment. The cold is starting. We're getting ready for the night. Bo has already gotten into the sleeping bag. All good, Bo? Yeah. Yes, it's going to be a long night. Yeah. It's getting cold. Another train is coming from the other direction, from Nuadibu, the coastal city. It's actually empty. Here it is. It's passing by. It's empty because it goes up to Zuerat to reload the iron and then return to Nuadibu, where it will be unloaded onto overseas ships, which will then take it to China. It will be taken to all the countries that trade with Mauritania. But what I was thinking is that for us today, it's a bit of fun to make this journey. But wow, it's tough, huh? Imagine doing it every day, five days a week. It's a journey of hope. 24 hours on a train where you get sand, iron in your mouth, in your eyes, in your nose all the time. It's a tough journey, a very tough journey. And here people really do it many times a week. We'll try to eat something like a banana. Here's a banana. Hey, what is that? We have dates. Let's go. Wow. Wow. Oh, look at that. Look at my Yeah. Wow. My goodness, I look scary. Maybe the first one is better to spit out because... 
I'm on a block. Bro. <laughs> How can I tell you? Yes. Yes. You're black. So I, I don't know if it's because I'm so very hungry, but this banana seems delicious. Dates. Look at these rough characters riding the world's longest, heaviest, most dangerous train. Well done, he got it. That's right. It's Creso, exactly like that. Creso is Creso, Creso. I swear I'm still not used to this face. I love fighter. <laughs> well then, let's say goodbye to the guys. Pico village. Wow. The situation is getting worse, my face. Quick update. We went to the station of Shum, the city of Shum. So other people are are getting on the train. And it's practically impossible to sleep when the train is is moving. There's practically a sandstorm, but in reality it's iron. Here, Miro is trying to sleep. Bo, where did Bo go? Bo, where are you? I'm here. Okay. He was sleeping, poor thing. So, nothing now will try to sleep even though it's really, really complicated. The nice thing is that we have a beautiful show above us, beautiful stars and all, but it will be hard to sleep. Second stop. We are in a city called Etmemicha or something like that. We've stopped. Now we'll be stationary for a few minutes. Bo did an incredible job because with his heels he leveled out this whole area because we couldn't sleep. It was like a ditch, making it seem like we were falling every time the train moved. So now we should be able to sleep, maybe. Can I give you some of my goats to keep there until tomorrow? Are you coming with the goats? They won't let us sleep. Okay, then I'll put them in the wagon next to yours. Okay, okay, put them there. I can't believe it. Can't believe it. Do you want me to jump into the other wagon? Okay, quick, quick, put them here. Who did you? Tell my little turtle. I need for light. The light. Yes. Ah, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Wow. Do you have a rope? I'll go get it. Basically, we have a new travel companion. A gentleman is bringing us some goats. He trusts he trust us, by the way. He don't know us, but he trusts us. This Why is, is he keep, like, what should we do now? <laughs> now we will, what should we now do? We will keep it. it makes me so we, will, we will keep it with us until uh, we arrive to Nwadibu. She's, she's very friendly. Yeah. <laughs> How? Inga, We are not gonna sleep anymore. <laughs> we are not gonna sleep anymore. The Mauritanian can, tr can trust any Mauritanian <laughs> because he don't know, even don't know one of them of us. And he brought his goats to let them with us. So this is what we call trust. And uh, it's something very famous here. Why do you trust each other? Because we are a Muslim and this is our behavior, we cannot, uh, he know that I cannot steal his goats. This is the Islam, the rules of Islam, this is the, the true Islam, yes. Okay. Um, this is truly unexpected, but it makes the journey even more beautiful. Can you, can you feel this feeling? So far I can feel only the dust in my eye. Oh, but this which is, feeling? Which this feeling? is for me the freedom. It's me the freedom. Now you can sleep wherever you want. Under the, the sky. Sun, under the sky. <laughs> on one of the, uh, the longest iron train in the world. 
on the top of the wagon, dusty everywhere, cold everywhere. Yeah, but still <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, that's <laughs> this is freedom for me as a Mauritanian. I've never seen stars like big, this big. <laughs> they look like uh, lumps. Lumps? Yes. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> they look like, you know, lights. Yeah. It's amazing to see the stars during the night on top of a wagon. Yeah. Um, very dusty, very cold. Yeah. This is what we remember usually. Yes. The, 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 hardest, adventure, right? the hardest days, the <laughs> hardest night. Yes. That's what are you going to remember. Yeah. Not uh, the ceremonies, the <laughs> parties. This is something that you do all of the days. But this train is lifetime experience. Unique. Unique. You should leave it just one time and enough. <laughs> and you will remember this time, this night. Uh, in the forever. Whole, for, forever. All your life you will remember it. Let's try to rest, but the sudden braking and the screeching of the train don't help. Yet I don't mind staying awake. I've dreamed for so many years of living this adventure that I almost don't want to close my eyes. Also, above me, a spectacular starry sky makes the journey even more unforgettable. At sunrise, Bo does something unexpected. He plunges his hands into the iron dust, collecting as much as he can, and begins to rub it on his arms, face, neck, and behind his ears. I watch him in amazement, but then he explains that he is purifying himself for the morning prayer. Every practicing Muslim, before praying, must wash their feet, hands, mouth, face, and ears. But in the absence of water, especially the Bedouins, use desert sand as a symbolic gesture. On this train, however, the iron dust seems to be the only possibility. Very cold, still very cold. I'm looking for something to cover me. We expected to encounter many other clandestine passengers on these wagons, but we don't see anyone, just one person over there in the distance, a gentleman. And on the other side, much further away, there are others. But we expected many more. But in reality, it's just us here. What about the village? They abandon it. Exactly. It happens sometimes that the sand cover yeah. the villages. Exactly. That's happened in Shingichi. Yeah. In Shingichi, when you visit Shingichi, you will see the village, the house, uh, the, 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 the big sand dune, stole the house from people. <laughs> really? Yeah, the justification. And then people have to move. People have to move, how to change their location. You know that your house belongs to the desert. So when the desert wants to take it back, it does it. Yeah. <laughs> In Mauritania, yeah. there are lots of treasure below the, the sand dunes. The sand dunes stole those stuff. Or maybe they took it back. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it make me think that, you know, if one city was the most important in the world yeah. 1,000 years ago. Yeah. Now it's nothing. It's below the sand. Yeah. It means that, you know, in life, uh, things change very become, fast. Become, become historical city, that's it. And yes, <laughs> or maybe nothing. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes we, we desire yeah. things that, who knows if they are really that important. It's incredible that you can't even see the end of the... You saw the header of the train? No, I cannot even see it. It's so long. The thing that makes me smile is that it would probably take us half an hour on foot to get to the front of the train. It's amusing, 
Meanwhile, our neighbor has gotten up. He's praying. And it turns out that all our conversations with Bo end up being about religion, because it's very important to him. It's the fulcrum, the pivot of his life. So he's happy to explain it to us. And I'm happy to listen because he's a really, really capable guy who's helping us a lot on this journey. A truly very hard journey and not just for us. Nice and warm with us. They two have spent a night, you know, laughing matter. Let's give them some food, yes. Yeah. yeah. All our stuff is full of iron dust. But that's a problem we'll think about once we get off. Right now, there are much more urgent things to take care of. It's extremely difficult. So, there's no bathroom. But we have a rule that we take care of our needs at the corners. Think about this. This train is the only train in Mauritania. It's, it's extraordinary if you think about it. That's why for these people, the only option they have is to get on these wagons, even the freight trains. So they hitch a ride from this train because it's the only one. They wouldn't have any other option except cars. But cars are very expensive. I keep telling Bo that life in the desert is too hard for me. But he surprised me with a response I won't forget. You know why, why I like all of this? Because it reminds me that I need just the essential to be happier. In the city, people, they desire something that don't really need. For example, cars, big uh, houses. Uh, big women, <laughs> lots of women, <laughs> something like this. It's true. So this is a, a, a race. It's a race they cannot win. Simple. They will always desire something more. But believe me, when you live in the desert, you will appreciate whatever the life gives you. Even the small things. Even the small things. The desert may seem a very hard place to live, but believe me, it's the best place in the world to be happy. You can feel alive. You can live the adventure like this. Yeah. yeah. And thanks to you, we live this adventure that make me feel alive as I've never done in my life. So no, thanks for a mass and thank you. Ciao, ciao. God bless. Thank you. We need to be very quick, because the guards are coming. Okay. So I think they came to check. Okay, we made it. And once again, we made it. A 22-hour odyssey crossing the heart of the Sahara Desert with Bo, an unexpected travel companion. The train turned him into a friend. Bo is a man of the desert, carrying on his shoulders the weight of a life filled with sacrifice and devotion to Allah. Every word and gesture are reflections of deep faith and boundless love for his desert, the source of his happiness, where the sand tells ancient stories and time seems to dance to the rhythm of the iron train. What remains is the indelible memory of an unforgettable journey that united two distant worlds and reminded us of who we really are when we are away from the comforts of daily life. I thought it would be worse. Nino, how are you doing? Show them how the situation is. We could even wait to take a shower. <laughs> yeah.